Hey guys, man, again with another YouTube video. And today we're going to be taking a look at the GOL Magnum. Um, this was kind of just like a side build. Um, I was suggested to build the L96 or elsewise known as the Arctic Warfare Magnum, elsewise known as L115, and all these other designa designations and all these other things. But I ended up making a side build of this right here and it turned out to be something really cool so I have a few images here that are rendered um, so I'm gonna go ahead and download these and open them up for you guys as we go along um, there's three different downloaded images here and I'm gonna start with this one here so this right here is the goal magnum in its standard stock it usually comes in this type of uh, green stock and it, this one has like nothing special to it. This is just the basic stock that it comes with and, uh, you know, not anything special at all. Now then this gold magnum of mine was in my attempt at like a wood grain style stock. So like there's different uh, wood grain patterns and this one's all, the grain of the wood is all going this way. So this is kind of like a wooden stock that I have going on, but it didn't turn out that well. So I was like, well, what if I tried doing something else? So I went with something more like a composite stock that had certain part or colors inlaid in it. And this is what I got out of it. And this looks much better. So this is the uh, one that I use the most. And this is the one that looks the best. So we're going to download this and we're going to open it up in LDD. just so you guys don't hear that. All right, so this is the Gold Magnum 4.5 version. Uh, version 4 was the wood grain and the lighter green stock that you guys saw. Version 4.5 was the gray with the yellow, the darker red, and the orange. So as with almost every single one of my guns, we're going to start at the stock and we're going to work everywhere work our way forward and yep so here's the stock this is a, actually a really unique stock because now it really works out here in the seam between the rubber butt pad and the actual like support for the uh, stock itself it looks really nice going pretty great right there and I like that uh, you got the back kind of like fin thing that comes down here and then you have the three screws on the side of the weapon itself where the stock connects into the kind of the like the framework of the stock itself um and then coming up of this stock or this part of the frame you have another part here that comes and connects to your cheek pad up here it's easier to see on this side so as you can see it comes up just like so and for some reason i have no idea why but you can look this up in any image there's a gap here between this support piece and this support piece. I have, I really don't know why, but I have it here, so I went with it. And as you can see on this side, you have your cheek kind of uh, the adjuster pieces. You would turn these up or down to get your cheek rest to go up and down, I guess. Elsewise, it's just the screws for it. The cheek pad itself is actually comfortable design. It curves here and it curves there. Nice kind of like 90 degree circle part right going on here. Uh, and then it curves down here and it curves up there. And it doesn't actually touch the top of the stock here. This all comes down onto this. So that's built comfortably so that when you're aiming down your sights of your scope, it's going to look something kind of like this. As you can see, there's translucent red pieces down at the end, thanks to uh, Alan's custom Lego for the scope design. If you guys want his scope design, um, you can download it from my website if you guys don't want to go through his tutorial. Uh, but if you really need to go check out his channel, I would highly recommend checking out his channel. It makes way better Lego guns than I do, and he's a pretty chill guy. Anyhow, back into the stock, as you can see, support piece here, hole there, angle here, nothing really big about that. Uh, coming into this grip, though, so this grip has the angle here and then comes back around so that you can wrap your thumb over. Uh, but where your other fingers go, your other three fingers that wrap around the grip themselves, I went ahead and I made this 
octagonal, octagonal. Um, this part here is a trapezoid, but if you were to continue this pattern, it'd be an octagon. Uh, but I made it so that basically when your fingers are wrapped around this, they're not totally uncomfortable. I made this as comfortable as possible. The trigger's uh, different from the usual design. This one actually uses kind of like good looking pieces, not like the standard Technic pieces. And then the trigger guard, of course, comes up into where your magazine is and so on. Uh, this piece on the outside here covers up what you can see of the trigger mechanism. Of course, you have just some modeling back here, the angles and stuff. It goes up into here. Your magazine should be removable. Oh, why is it not removable? So here's the magazine. It's got the uh, simulated bullet up in the top of it. Fits up there nicely. Just slides right up in there. Removable, of course. I did not find any information on that magazine release. I really wish I could have built a working one, but I didn't find one. So that is disappointing. Uh, the bolt itself is right here. So here's your bolt. And it works, which is the best part. So as you can see, there's a Technic piece running down the entire length that reinforces it all. Here's your bolt handle so that you can pull it up and back. And it sits inside of its casing right there. And as you can see, it locks in the place right between the uh, scope mounting piece here and then this piece there. And then you have just kind of like a chamber going on right there. So that just slides right back in there. I wish LDD would let me set this bolt all the way down so that it's sitting where it's supposed to be. Because as of right now, it, it does not sit where it's supposed to be. Like I said, this is Alan's Custom Legos scope design. He uses it, well, he used it on his uh, Barrett MRAD. He switched up the scope design a little bit for his, um, uh, um, the other sniper rifle. G28, MR28? Marksman, yeah, MR28. He changed it up a little bit for that one, but this is the scope design that he has instructions for. Uh, check out his channel for it if you want instructions. Then we get to just a bunch of stock, so stock design, stock design, angles, more angles up here. Uh, but here's four screws here, and what these four screws are doing, and they're actually inlaid inside of the uh, stock themselves, but they sit flush with it, which is really cool. What these are doing is holding on the rail system on this side. So here's your little rail system on this side. There's vent holes above for your free float barrel system. Speaking of barrel, you have a barrel going on down the entire length of the model here with uh, semi-circle pieces up here so it's not like a full circle so that it's not weak. And then actual circle pieces down here until you get to the muzzle brake which has little vents in it of course and you can see down through to the end of the muzzle. And then it has the front sight, fiber optic sight, that is red right there and that's pretty much it for the GOL Magnum so this should be up on the website soon enough sometime probably today probably after today I don't know I'll get there eventually and that's pretty much it for this video so I'll see you guys later thanks for watching remember to comment rate and subscribe if you guys want to see more videos like this one it'd be greatly appreciated if you guys help support me and I you guys do and you guys are some of the best fans uh, any youtuber could ask for and I thank you guys for that and that's pretty much it. So if you guys want to see this model, don't be afraid to check out my website. Link will be in the description below as always. And that's pretty much it for this one. So see you guys later. Have a nice day.